man's mind with its great search for freedom and an equally great determination to never be free so you are trying all kinds of spiritual tricks with the ostensible objective of meeting peace or freedom or bliss or truth and you are parallelly ensuring that the methods are designed to fail as if one wants to deceive nobody but himself as if one is determined to keep telling himself that he is sincere and one is equally determined to never to attain to his sincere goal one does not know what to say of man is he a seeker or is he a stubborn cheat by the looks of it there are seekers everywhere somebody is seeking through money somebody is seeking through pleasures of various kinds somebody is seeking through prestige somebody through knowledge and somebody through divine chanting or yogic asanas and there are others who are seeking through politics through wars various other means and methods hmm? and at the same time the moment you pay attention to it it is obvious that none of it is ever going to help it is not as if there is a deficiency in the method it is almost as if the method is designed to not to succeed as if we are working hard to just to convince ourselves that we indeed want freedom but where freedom is direct and simple we deny it that's what is happening in rishikesh as well if you see shops that are selling a variety of things material and non material this worldly and probably other world as they claim it is because there are people who want those things if rishikesh won't exist in this form it would exist in some other form because there is a demand and where there is demand supply is automatically created because we want somebody to entertain us with spiritual gossip because we want somebody to convince us that without changing the core of being liberation is still possible so there exist shops 
that are selling cheap liberation and there exist teachers who are giving us easy truth whom do we fault the teacher or the student and are the teacher and the student really different aren't they the two sides of the same coin had there been a student demanding nothing but pure truth nothing but total freedom pure and total teacher two would have descended the pure and total teacher is nothing but a flesh and blood manifestation of the great demand of the student's heart to fly free if that demand really exists inside the student or the seeker then the teacher necessarily appears on the outside but when the student himself is determined to ask for something spurious something mediocre even fake then equally you get a teacher on the outside who is all there to provide exactly what the student wants stuff mediocre superficial spurious so when we ask the question what is rishikesh the question turns around to us and the question questions us who are you because rishikesh is nothing but the expression of who we are if we are different rishikesh would change were we any different we wouldn't have seen this rishikesh is it possible to really look at man's surroundings in isolation or the society in isolation doesn't man create his own society and in turn gets created by it if you say that a place is filthy is it the fault of the place or is it about the mind that pervades that place whatever this place is represents who we are if we follow the crowds in the great cities in our jobs in the cinema halls in the shopping malls we follow the crowds here as well if a herd mentality exists everywhere else in our domain the same herd mentality exists here as well it's just that in another city you are following the crowd that is going to the newest friday release and in rishikesh you are following the crowd that is going to the most popular teacher in either case most of us do not know what they are getting into we are just following the flock you see look at a probable day of a common man hmm? in the day time he is all busy catering to his vocation he goes to his office he earns money and then when he is tired in the evening he wants to relax a little because his day has been tense otherwise why would there be a need to relax so he would go to a pub or to a temple hmm you can go to a pub or you can go to a temple to relax that is what is happening how does it matter which place you are choosing to feel relaxed ultimately you are relaxing yourself just so that the next morning you can again enter your tense and stressful schedule 
right? So it's great. Come over to Rishikesh for a week or a month and then go back to the same life. It's the equivalent of a pub in a metro. Helps you have some sound sleep. Rishikesh would have really blossomed and materialized as a spiritual place if it could really change and dissolve a person. That too happens. But that happens for one in thousand visitors. And that is just too few. One in a thousand visitor never returns from here. And when I say here, I do not mean the geography. I mean the peace. Others who come here, they just go back to doing what they were doing. Just as you watch a movie. To calm your tense nerves for a while. And after you have calmed down, We don't come here to dissolve. Hmm? We come here determined to stay the way we are. We come here to get decorated. We come here to be a little more attractive, maybe more fit, maybe more knowledgeable, maybe more skilled in a certain art or yoga. But who comes here to die? Who comes here to never to return? Nobody. Somebody. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. One in a thousand, maybe. <laughs> as I said. Yeah. But that one in a thousand is really precious. Really precious. I wish we had many more of them. Every year I come here. And how many of such people do I meet? One, two, maximum five. And even of the five, I can't be absolutely sure. And the crowds that I meet, who are they? Mostly people. Nobody can be blamed. You are to be blamed only when you are hurting someone else and benefiting yourself. How to blame someone whose intellect is causing the greatest damage to nobody else but himself? You can sympathize, you can commiserate, you can be full of compassion. 